Hi, hello, welcome once again to this course of business planning. We are working on uh, learning how to prepare a good business plan and we are taking in this video on the fourth activity on the assessment of risks. Uh, in this video I will combine two things uh, which I initially planned to split into two separate videos. So, first of all, I will give you a short instructional as for how to assess risks for the purposes of a business plan. And then I will make a short demo of my own risk assessment in connection with the business concept I am demonstrating in this course, in those videos. I can just remind you that the business concept which I have been presenting as my own demo throughout the last three activities, so throughout uh, pitching, uh, goal setting and uh, um, business modeling. So throughout those three activities I was simulating the development of a business concept which, by the way, I am working on. It is a business concept which consists in manufacturing small uh, wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines. Okay, so we go into the PowerPoint, into one of my favorite presentational tools. Uh, here is the presentation. I will go slide by slide and explain the context. So, once again, uh, reminder, uh, which is important for those who want to follow consistently this course. You can read it here. This activity is strongly connected with two others, social, uh, goal setting and planning. So it is a good idea, it is a good move to take the same business concept and push it through all those three activities. Number three, uh, goal setting, number four, risk assessment, and number five, planning. So, I recommend you once again to take a business concept which you have already run through, the goal setting practice, and now ask yourself uh, the following question. What can possibly prevent you from reaching your comprehensively described goals. So what can be the obstacles? Huh? Here already one like side remark in business planning, risk is not really understood as danger because from the point of view of a business plan there is not really such thing as danger strictly speaking. Uh, we are rather talking about obstacles on your path to achieve your goals. Hmm? So you list those things that can possibly prevent you from reaching your goals and you make a list of what we call adverse events, like a list of things which can possibly go wrong. Uh, by the way, you can combine this practice and other practices which follow with uh, the first one, so with pitching. Each time you prepare your own content in, the, in such a practice, you can pitch it to someone else, to another person. You can present them uh, what uh, you have imagined or what you have listed, what you have written down, and just listen to what they have to say about it. Uh, one remark, for the purpose of the practice, try not to exceed 10 items on your list of risks. And this essentially translates into the reality of business planning as well. A good business plan is concise. It delivers the business concept in a very uh, condensed way. People who are supposed to listen to your business plan or to read it usually are, are busy people. They don't have much time to read it, they don't have much time to listen to you. You need to deliver the essential things in a few minutes. So try to focus on the most important risk factors, 
not on everything that comes to your mind. Now, there is an, uh, an analytical aspect to this. Try to assess intuitively or mathematically, however you can, for this specific risk factor that you are talking about, two, uh, two aspects or two dimensions, probability and magnitude. I will use an example to explain you uh, how I distinguish between probability and magnitude. If you live in Central Europe, as I do, a hurricane is a risk of low probability, because it doesn't really happen every week, but of big magnitude. If a hurricane really happens, it will make the hell of a mess all around me. So the magnitude of damage will be big. On the other hand, if I take a risk such as, for example, ants making a nest inside my house, this is a risk of high probability because those buggers do it all the time, but low magnitude. The damage is negligible. That's the intuitive distinction between probability and magnitude in uh, a risk factor in, bis pl in business planning. So for each uh, of the risks you identified, sorry, I made a misspelling here. Uh, for each of the risks you identified, nail down those two metrics, the probability of that event happening on the one hand and the magnitude of damage incurred, should it really happen. Now there is a little trick which you can use if you have problems with uh, assessing the probability of an event. I went through it myself when I did various kinds of risk assessment. There are situations when we cannot really nail down the probability. We approach the given risk factor like it is going to happen or it is not going to happen, like 50-50. Then I propose you to use an old technique, it is the Bayesian trick. It is the technique used initially by Reverend Thomas Bayes, who is supposed to be the founding father of Bayesian statistics. Imagine that the entire, that the entire universe, that the entire reality of your business is like a big flat surface, for example, like a pool table. Mentally divide this table this pool table into two parts, two unequal parts. One part is the universe where uh, that risk factor really happens. And another part of the table is the universe where this risk absolutely doesn't happen, like certainly not. And mentally compare the size of those two surfaces and ask yourself what percentage of that total big pool table corresponds to that sub-universe where the risk in question certainly happens. It is a mental trick. You can use a drawing to represent it. It helps you to assess the probability of certain risks if you have problems with nailing them down exactly. So now I go into the demonstration of what I did in terms of my risk assessment. What you will see on the following slides uh, has been prepared according to my guidelines for your practice. Uh, I mean that I devoted like 40 minutes to sketch the content that you can find on the following slides. It is roughly corresponding to what I recommend you in your own practice during this course. So, a reminder, my business concept, manufacturing uh, small electric turbines, wind, uh, wind and hydro. Uh, and my goals, such as I sketched them in the demo part of the goal setting activity, are the following. Assuming that I start this manufacturing business now, in five years from now, I want to own the land where the business is located. 
it was an important point in my goal setting. I will know I have the land I wanted when, uh, when the land is in some uh, remote countryside location. You can consider it a caprice, yet it is my personality projected into my business concept. I want that whole operation to be located in something like a countryside place, not in an industrial zone. There are such places. It is not completely unrealistic, mm, particularly in the, like in the outskirts of relatively small towns. There are zones which are like countryside, but you are allowed to locate some medium sized manufacturing operations in that place. And finally, my third important goal, I need to derive a steady cash flow from the business in order to assure others that it works. So ownership of the land, proper location and the steady cash flow are my goals. Now I translate those goals into the possible adverse events. So into all the things that can possibly go wrong. As for the ownership of the land, the adverse events that can happen is, my, is me failing to acquire property rights to a piece of land with the desired location or accessorily I could, my, I could find myself in a situation when I take a heavy mortgage, so that specific type of bank loan to finance the acquisition of real estate and thus I have a big debt like weighing on that real estate. As for the steady cash flow that I want, the adverse events uh, that can happen is the failure to assure steady net income after tax or and the failure to assure enough operational income after current costs but before amortization to fully utilize the possibility to amortize my fixed assets. I go further into an analysis of, as you can see in the title of the, sala, of the slide, the probability and the magnitude in my risks. I will go one by one. So first one first. Failure to acquire property rights to a piece of land with the desired location. It is a risk of typical low probability and low magnitude which in, uh, with those five years I have in perspective nailing the right deal so buying the right land is quite possible and even if I fail at doing it it is rather about my desires and ambitions than about true damage so this risk factor is low probability and low magnitude now I go to the second one heavy mortgage on the land thus a lot of debt it is low probability but big magnitude. Magnitude is big because if I contract a big debt it will be a substantial weight on my financial stance. This is an objective fact. Yet if I act in a sensible way, if I act rationally, I simply can avoid such a decision. So this is not something that can come on me uh, like a divine in intervention. It is essentially the outcome of my own decisions. So if I don't make like cardinal mistakes, I am safe. And finally, the third risk factor, so the, f the third adverse event in this analysis, it is my failure to assure steady operational cash flow. And uh, this is uh, an occasion to go back to um, one of the activities that we went through already to activity number two to business modeling. This in this case I can use business modeling to study the occurrence of this risk. So to study the occurrence of uh, negative or, or very small operational cash flow in companies of this type, so in companies which uh, are uh, running their operations in the industry of small wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines. So I can use that 
whole uh, process where I go to investor relations site of those businesses and, and just check how they work. So I did some research, I did some rummaging as, I, as you can see it here and I discovered essentially two, two important facts. Uh, that the producers of small wind turbines and small hydroelectric turbines, if those producers are like operationally efficient, if they can derive a steady cash flow from their operations, they have two, excuse me, I moved the wrong frame, I wanted to move myself. So they use two alternative business models. Each of them uh, involves integrating the business with something else. So the first business model consists in vertically integrating the manufacturing of turbines with the ownership and operational management of power installations. This is what we call vertical integration because uh, turbines are intermediate good for the power installations. And the second business model uh, consists in considering or in manufacturing those turbines as just uh, one among many industrial goods made in the same factory or in the same network of factories. Uh, so my most, um, uh, as I see it, so as I see those quick results of my business modeling, I can conclude provisionally that my most fundamental risk related to operational cash flow is strategic and operational, by which I mean that I need to follow consistently a certain strategy, a strategy oriented on developing one of those business models, or at, at, at least one, maybe both. If I don't follow this strategy, or if I fail to follow it consistently, then I fail, so then I really have problems with my cash flow. So this is when my risk factor consumes itself or is consumed in reality. Now, a return to the instructional part of this. Excuse me, I keep moving the wrong, the wrong frame. So here I return to the instructional part of this activity and I want to focus on how to handle risks uh, because uh, when you think about your risk factors in a business plan it is useful to think in the same time about the ways you can uh, you can handle those risks you can manage them there are essentially a few ways a few standardized ways of handling risks in a business the first, like the most elementary, is to insure against the given risk. Uh, so for each of the, risk, uh, of the risk factors on your own list, when you do your own practice of risk assessment, ask yourself, can I buy an insurance policy against this specific risk? I know it sounds quite simplistic, but it works and it is, fre and it is frequently applied. For example, if I run an engineering company, and they risk to harm a third person with my technology, I buy an insurance contract against civil liability. And this is it. Another form, which is akin an insurance contract, just a little bit more general, it is sharing the risk with some kind of business partners. When you think about it, when you form, for example, a business partnership or a joint stock company, it is about diluting the risk. You share risks inherent to your business with a group of other business partners. So each of the people involved is burdened by a relatively smaller risk. The third technique is hedging. Uh, in a moment, I explain how I can um, ap 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 apply it creatively here. Hedging consists quite simply in using in practice that saying that you never put all your eggs in the same basket. If I invest in something that is risky, I try to compensate 
that risk by investment into something else, into some other kind of assets, which are less risky or which are not subject to the same type of risk. So hedging follows the idea of balance. If one of my investments is subject to big risk, I compensate it with something else so as to have some kind of settled balance in my overall risk management. Uh, the fourth technique of risk handling is a contingency plan. What to do if bad things start happening? It is like an old wisdom in business that risk management cons uh, consists very largely in spotting early some kind of sentinel events, which are warning signals that the really big adverse event could happen any moment and then we have the time to like change course through contingency plans and finally the most interesting thing uh, which is a little bit of an intellectual passion for me the phenomenon of collective intelligence or in other words there are risks which we can handle the most creatively or the most productively if we devise a method of controlled exposure to that risk. So instead of exposing ourselves totally to the given adverse event, we expose ourselves like piece by piece, step by step. And then we learn how to cope with the given risk. So the management of my own risks. You can see it here, the management of my own risks, so how I uh, uh, decided to manage those risks that I have already nailed for my business concept. Um, so the whole thing related to real estate, to the acquisition of the right real estate, is not really a big risk. Because every, every, uh, you could see that each of those aspects is like low probability and low and low magnitude essentially. So it is more about ambitions. And the risk of excessive debt, I can avoid it just by rational, uh, by uh, rationally running my operation. So I focus on the third risk factor. So on the risk connected to insufficient or negative cash flow from my operations. And here I will go uh, like one by one through those risk management assumptions that I formulated. Let me become a little bit smaller in that window. So I cannot really, I cannot really insure against the risk of taking the wrong strategic path or against the risk of failing to follow that path consistently. So insurance in this case as a technique of risk management is just out of the game. I can hedge yet. I, I, I can hedge. So in parallel to investing in the manufacturing of small turbines, I can invest in large amounts of land. And here I creatively used my goals and my risk factors. If I want to have land, I can as well acquire more land than just the necessary surface that I need for my manufacturing operations. I can acquire more land and that surplus, that excess of land will be my hedging asset. I will just freeze, invest my capital in that land as a real estate investment in the hope that it uh, earns value in the market of real estate. And so I will hedge my operations, my manufacturing operations with the investment in real estate, in, in land. And another thing is the use of contingency plans. Uh, so at the end of, of the day, as I wrote here, I want to figure out to nail down the right business model. And it would be a good thing, and I will return to it in my uh, demo for the planning activity, so the next one. I should have contingency plans in my business plan, uh, so as to change course when my capacity to go into the right business model is visibly at jeopardy. 
Okay, let's go to the last slide. Uh, here I uh, go to something that is important to understand, like a general principle in business planning. I gave it the title, the value of my risk. It is something that you can even sort of meditate about, yet in business risk is a quantity rather than a probability strictly spoken. It is a difference between the perception of risk in business and the perception of risk in business planning. In, the, in daily life, uh, we tend to perceive risk as a probability, as the likelihood of bad things happening. Because we, uh, we consider it in, uh, according to the distinction between bad things and good things. But in business, uh, the risk is a value. Hmm? My risk in this specific demonstration is related to cash flow. And I ask myself the following question. How much capital am I willing to put into hedging with land uh, in order to counter the possible loss of cash flow in manufacturing operations? And the answer can be expressed as a mathematical expression. Uh, the one in the bottom of the slide, I will magnify it now. I want to devote to this specific risk management strategy enough capital to produce the inequality. I am sorry, this is not an equality. It is an inequality. where the growth in the value of land owned, so the growth in its market value, is equal or greater than the operational flow at risk, the operational cash flow at risk. This is how I can mathematically express the amount of capital I want to devote to hedging, to this specific risk management technique. Okay. You could see my demo of risk assessment. Now, an important remark, like, like as a closure to this specific activity. Mm. Risk uh, assessment in business planning is usually much simpler than the type of risk assessment that you could see, for example, in uh, insurance. Uh, companies because in, in the in insurance business you are very mathematical in your risk assessment in business planning you should go just to the basic distinction and uh, you keep in mind when you prepare a business plan you keep in mind constantly that whichever part of the business plan you are working on you should be ready to pitch that specific set of concepts, that specific part of the business plan, to a third person. To pitch, I mean to present it in a concise and attractive way. So keep it simple, stay down like to the basic distinctions which you can handle intellectually and which you can handle in a conversation. So this is all in this activity. I hope you will enjoy practicing it on your own and as usually have fun with science and have fun with life. Bye.